Hello and welcome to our podcast. Our topic today is about depression and we're going to have one episode, which is this one. I'm here with three other members. They're all from my health class. First, we have Bella. Hello. We have Laureen. Hi. And we have James. Hello. So we're here to talk about depression and as we are far from professionals. So just keep that in mind. We have, we do not have a psychiatry degree or what is it? What are they, what, who are people who work like the mental health? I don't I know. I guess there's therapists. I guess there's therapists. therapists. Well, we're yeah. far from psychiatrists and therapists. So keep that in mind. We are ninth graders who need to do a project. But we think it's a good topic to talk about because nowadays it's so like stunted. Don't you guys think like really stunted? Yeah, it, it's just and, really common for people around our age now. Yeah, like it's such a big problem, but then you see it's not talked about that much. But it's strange, but I guess that's why brilliant minds like us are here for. That is our purpose <laughs> on the earth. Right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, but we're actually really far from brilliant minds. But it doesn't take a brilliant person to be educated on depression, and I think that's one of the reasons why it is not like talked about as frequently because people don't. It's awkward around people because they don't know what to say. Like, isn't it the first thing that comes to your guys' mind? Like, if you weren't educated, you'd be like, "Isn't depression just another form of sadness?" Just well, a I'm gonna bit say. Worse. If you want to be treated with depression, you're gonna to have to have a brilliant mind. You're gonna need a you're gonna need a PhD to be a par- therapy therapist. My bad, but yeah, I guess you don't need one to just understand it. Yeah, so you don't need a PhD in therapy or psychiatry or anything to just be educated on it, so you can also, help people around you. Also, yeah, like what she said at the end, just always have someone there that you know you can trust and then can help you in your darkest times yeah so if people are uneducated it's just a big question what really is clinical depression and yeah a lot of people believe oh it's just a big another form of sadness which in a way is kind of true but it's not really it's a really big misconception about depression because depression causes a loss of interest in usual activities like all of us in this podcast group like to play volleyball. All of us do. And just saying the, an unfortunate event that we fell into a depression, that love, that passion for the sport would just fade away, wouldn't it? You guys wouldn't feel as passionate as you would about volleyball, right? Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. having no passion just makes everything weird and forced. Yeah, so depression negatively affects the way you act, the way you feel. It just causes sadness and everything, but it, it lasts way longer than usual sadness. Like sadness, you'll feel sad for maybe a day or two, but depression lasts for a really long time. And if you don't seek help for it, it can get progressively worse and worse. And that's just where the problem starts. And then you can't, it's very weird. It's very not good. It's Depression is depressing, honestly. That's the only way to describe it. And the reason why sadness is not the same thing as depression is because grieving and feeling sad is a natural thing. You're always going to feel sad. Like there isn't going to be a week or maybe there will be a week if you have like a marvelous week, but there isn't going to be a time in your life where you won't feel sad maybe in a week, a day, a month. You can't go a year without being sad unless you've been miraculously blessed. So, but depression is not natural. It's not natural to go through depression. But depression and sadness are completely different things. And like sadness, it comes and goes, you know, like you're sad, like let's say your aunt died or you're sad because uh, your mom has cancer. Or you're just sad because you have no friends. But that comes and goes. While depression, it just stays there and it just lingers forever. Like a leech. The, not a leech. The, the manta ray things. You know those fishes that like... I, I seriously don't know. Yeah. I know. Like those aquatic fishes animals. fishes that stick under the manta rays. There's a Pokemon like that. You guys... 
Oh, I know that Pokemon. Yeah. It's called yeah. <laughs> Mantine. 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 What? <laughs> So yeah, so it, a passion would stick like that, gentlemen, like that. So it would link, it would stick with you. Sadness, it's just a fish in the sea that swims by. It'll like look at you for a little bit. They'll Maybe come swim and with go. you. Yeah, and they'll swim with you for a little bit. It'll be like Dory, just keep swimming and like pass you or something. Dory, Dory is like sadness. Okay, picture sand. She'll just keep swimming and then she'll pass you sometimes into the deep blue sea of sadness. Well, but like it could also like if you ask someone for help, it, it could be like I don't know. Let's let's stay off the sea because that's actually a hard thing to go off. Let's say you're in a tunnel, right? You see the light at the end, right? So that's sadness. You can get there, but depression is like a long tunnel, barely any light, and you have a flat tire. So like that's what depression is compared to sadness. But also with depression, if you have a good friend you trust that's just right there, you. Can and ask and be like, hey, this is, I have a flat tire. Can you get me a new one? And it's just like with depression, you'd be like, hey, I have depression. But don't say it like that. That's just horrible. Like, you can, yes, like, don't... say something like that. Yes, as we said yeah. before, we are far from professionals, so do not listen that, to a word. That's just <laughs> messed up when you start laughing at that. <laughs> yeah, so I feel like that's also a big reason why depression is, like, so frowned upon. It's because, like, or there's so much of it. It's because it's so hard for someone to ask for help. Like if I had a flat tire, say I had a flat tire in the tunnel, in the dark tunnel with no light and it seems so far away to the end and someone drove by, I would be embarrassed to ask for help because imagine a world where people 95% of the time know how to change their tire. And then you were just one of the ones who just didn't. Why would I ask for help? Why would I risk putting myself out there and being like, I am part of the 5% that doesn't know how to fix my tire. I, I don't know how to fix a tire. We're just going to clarify it that. Do you guys know how to fix a tire? Uh, you put some kind of special no. tape on it. Hey. And then you just blow air into it. Hey. I don't think they do Not that. Like, it's it's a special it's a special like like flex tape, you know, flex tape. Oh. They just put it on there, like something like that. I need to yeah, pump it. Well, you know what? what? Tires are not depressing right now. Let's talk about what are like ways you can get it, you know, like ways you acquire something like that. The causes. Everything has like, a cause, you guys. This podcast cause has and a effect. Cause. Uh, cause and effect. <laughs> I mean, Podcast I guess some big causes would be stress and anxiety. Those are some pretty big causes. Yeah, yeah like yeah. a ton of work, like like a mountain, you know, like you see in those TV shows, they got all that work. It goes up to like, space and then you got your parents looking down on you like, you're getting that A, aren't you? Not that, not that B plus, not that 89.9. No, you're getting that 100. So like that can just like build on you. Another thing that can also be the cause of depression is conflict. And that could either be like, this means a family. I mean, family is family. We all know that. But like, sometimes your siblings are just so annoying. You're all the younger siblings, aren't you? I am the older one. You do not know what I go through. No, I'm just kidding. Siblings are so well, annoying. why don't you explain that to us right now? Yeah, well, You know, younger siblings are definitely very annoying. If you're listening to this podcast and you're a younger sibling, you have no idea what we go through. If you're a middle <laughs> child, I guess you know semi of what we go through. But if you're a little child, a younger, the baby of the family, no, you do not know what goes on with the oldest. So be thankful you were born last. Actually, yeah, no, yeah, I, yeah. I know. I know the younger ones have like their own opinions. They're like, oh, well, we have all hand me downs and that. whatever. Have your hand me downs. Like, it can it can put you real down if like, like nah, let's start like like oh, spouse conflict. Like real down, you get a divorce. Like something bad goes down. Like, I don't yeah, know, but something bad goes down. That a divorce, you know, you've been in there, you've been with that person for a good amount of time. It's like when like you go away. That's not just like a sadness. It could be a sadness, but most likely a not. Yeah, so a divorce, we're, we're also not professional. None of us have been married. None of us have been in intimate relationships. None of us will be in intimate relationships. If you have been in an intimate relationship, congratulations. But we are not experts on that. But yes, of course, marriage and divorce, 
can bring about depression and it's depressing what marriage can bring about depression yes um good things can bring on depression which is kind of scary to be honest like people around you will think oh my gosh amazing congratulations so happy for you and then you could just be like falling into the depression and no one's there to help you the best example of one of these is like having a child you're like yeah you have a child like all the family members like yeah you have a child we can pass down our legacy but then you're always like you know I have to spend more money I have to take care of something I have to go off work to be with this thing I have to make sure it's not in trouble I have to buy diapers I have to learn how to change diapers you know yeah having a child is just so life-changing it impacts you a lot and as what Alex was saying like there are so many new things that you need to get used to and it's just adjustment which is very stressful in general yeah none of us are experts on having children either especially the gentlemen i hope the gentlemen and i hope us but it also goes to say that it also could affect teen moms and i think that's one of the biggest problems is as a teenager that and you have a child at such a young age i think that's where depression can really strike is just at the younger age i'm not saying that adults can't get depression i'm just saying i feel like the having the baby scenario that's where it comes from the teenage pregnancy it can give you anxiety too yeah so anxiety it just kind is very messy another reason why um depression can occur is genetics which is really surprising in a way that's weird genetics are weird aren't they yeah uh, imagine just like like it's not it's not like even nothing bad has happened to you yet or nothing like life changing has happened to you and then boom you got hit with the wave you got hit with the wave of depression the sea of sadness and depression We're making the sea look so bad here, you guys. Don't we live like 30 minutes away from a beach? <laughs> yeah, you know beach. what? Go to the beach. Have a good time. Actually, can you go to the beach during this time? When no, the pandemic, mean... when the pandemic's over, I command you all to go to the beach. I don't know yeah, about you... that, but okay. <laughs> Supreme. Yeah, brother. you guys. The beach isn't. The sea isn't evil. There are very beautiful creatures there. The the bottom of the sea, sure, you can think of that as depression. We don't even know what's in there. Like only what seven percent of the ocean has been explored. Yeah, uh, that's just depressing on its own. Anyway, like, yeah. So genetics. Um, experts have found out that if a family member has had depression. It is likely for you to get it. They're not sure how it happens, though. So. Just... But don't worry; it's not a hundred percent. It's just a higher chance. Yeah, a higher it's like chance. So don't just a higher chance. Yeah, yeah, higher, higher chance. But it, that doesn't mean like people who have family members that have gone through it will get depression. So just yeah, higher chance, higher chance. No one don't. No one go into a panic. No one come attacking us for revealing this life-altering and horrific piece of information. It is just a higher chance. Genetics. Genetics yeah. are weird, you guys. Just Don't be very, them. like, cautious and observant of your family. Sometimes, if it's maybe run through your family, that yeah. might be good because sometimes we just don't want to tell other things to each other. Yeah. Um, another thing is abuse. So abuse can obviously bring on depression because it's just traumatic in so many ways. Like there's so many forms of abuse, and it sucks. It's so horrible to know that there are people who go through it. Like past abuse, if even if you've gone past it, it could still come back to haunt you like a ghost, like the manta ray thing, the fish. The ray thing. It comes back. It comes back and sticks on the mantle right again. Uh, or like. Well, I think that's enough for right now about how like you get depression. I think we talked about what it is, you know, how you get it. I think we should. You might be thinking now. Well, what people? What percentage of people actually have depression? And yeah. So that's like, if you percentage. look at it. If you, you can Google this easily, but no one wants to Google that. No one wants their own. No one wants that on their history. Well, 
the percentage of adults who experience any symptoms of depression was highest among those in the age 18 to 29. That's around people in college. So no college students should listen to this because we're all in high school. But be, be wary when you go to college. Yeah. Uh, college, we're all going to be there in four years. Sophomores in three, juniors in two, seniors. Ew. One. You guys will be legalized in like what? <laughs> few months. Some of you are already legalized. That's disgusting. How? That's so weird. Imagine being, being able to legalized. do things. Imagine being able to do things. Can't relate. Can't relate. Oh, wow. College people, be wary of your workload. Apparently, your age has a higher risk of depression. And I wonder why that is. Like, we obviously can't speak from experience, but I would think just the just the change of becoming an adult. You're no longer a kid. You have so many more responsibilities. I mean, us yeah, as, like, Everything what? goes on you now. Like, yeah, your parents don't always- take up your mistakes. If you were to do something bad, your parents won't get talked to. Everything's on you. All the blame's on you. Also, yeah, like, I can imagine, like, the amount of workload, like, how much it's multiplied by the time you get to college. And it's just constant work. Yeah, we're over here as, what, freshmen complaining about our workload. Imagine when we get to college. Oh, my. We're yeah, all... we don't That's know a lot of stress. what's coming up. Yeah, I think... we can only await. We can only look for you on the horizon. Yeah, anyway. the horizon sucks. Moving on, uh, there are also other percentages that Alex would like to talk about. Well, this one's not technically a percentage, but depression is a leading cause of disability, like being like having it just weigh on you. So it's technically a disability as well. But the National Institute of Mental Health, also known as the NIMH, if you didn't realize that, estimates that 16.2 million U.S. adults. That's that's a bunch of, that's six zero, no, five zeros, a two after that, a six after that, and a one after that. That's a lot. Had at least one, yeah, had at least one major depressive episode in 2016. It's not 2016 right now, but they do research like every six years. So in like one year from now, you know, we're going to get some more research, not research, yeah, research, you know. I can imagine that they just did one for 2020 because I feel like those numbers went way through the roof. It just all spiked. The way to Mars. Yeah, it definitely. Went all the way to all Mars. To the moon. I feel yeah. like they should have just conducted a research on that, but I guess they couldn't because we're all at home anyway. You can't go knocking on people's doors. Hi. Do you have anyone who's like, you know, you know? The price. Like, Okay, that's just weird. No, just knocking dude, on the door. Yeah. Okay, yeah, just just in general, you, know, you can't say that. <laughs> like, yeah, in general, like... please do not say that. Yeah, if someone came to my house, I'd be like, no, no. Hey, you got anyone who's like pressed here? We're doing a future. Yeah. Please no, get, get off the property, dude. Just get Karen's away from would this have house. Been like, Karen's would have been like pulling out, like, what do they have? Umbrellas, walking them across the estate. Get off my property. Yeah, yeah, but depression at its worst is really bad. It can lead to suicide. And like in the 2016 study, close to 800,000 people died. You know, suicide is the second leading cause of death in 15 to 29 year olds. Not cancer, not the flu. You know, I don't think COVID. Not COVID. (laughs) Yeah, suicide, second leading. You know, I'm not going to tell you the. If you want to know the first one, go look it up because it's not depression. Yeah, so that's just, that's really sad to think about. And to think that it's all because of social media and all these other things and everything. There's so many things that can just destroy the teenage mind now. And it's just become a daily part of life now, which is a big problem. It was actually proven that teenagers who used social medias had a higher chance of getting depression. So, you know, if you want to live a happy life, delete all social medias, you know, from... I don't have any, so I don't know any of them. Just get rid of it. Get it rid of No. Obviously, yeah. it's not something. It's so part of life that you can't just up and delete it. Like, if I told, like, half of the people in our health class, maybe one person would be, like, maybe for a day or something. 
it's just so hard to stay away from social media nowadays. Like, James, how much screen time do you spend a day on your phone? Relatively. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> no. It really depends. Um, okay. Just estimate. Come on. Don't be embarrassed. We all have a high. high I'm not embarrassed. Not James. I just don't know what I the think mine is like eight hours. Here. You know, James? Eight I'll, hours. I'll get, Same. I got you, James. Yeah. You don't have to share yours. You want to know how many of those hours are social media? Probably zero because I don't have any. Enlightening, Alex. Yeah, so we all have relatively eight hours. Let's just say James has 50 hours. And I'm just kidding. James has Wait, what? Eight Excuse hours me? a day on his phone. That's a lot. And I know me, Lorena, and James have a social media. I know I don't spend that much time on Instagram or anything or Snapchat because I don't have one. But I know people will tend to scroll. And in Instagram, I feel like it's such a huge platform. And I feel like p- people put themselves out there so much. And you have all these pretty people, pretty handsome people who you look at yeah, them but- and are like, how are their lives so perfect? I think that's, that's just You want to know their secret? They're just putting the what? best of themselves. They're just putting the best of themselves. You know, in reality, they have, they're all probably and- suffering. Yeah. Frolicking. The frolicking. They just hide themselves from the world or from whoever they care about. Yeah, and that's a big part of what people have a hard time realizing is that everyone, even the big people who have, what, 200 million followers, they're just like us. They can easily fall into a depression. They can easily, it's, you're not, it, it doesn't matter how you look. It's, you're just human. Everyone's human. It, to be honest, some people who are really pretty and handsome and whatever are not even that nice. Why are you going to hang out with them if they're not even that nice? It's just remembering what really matters in life. And I think that's hard for people to realize because there's such a big difference in like, oh, I'm famous on what? TikTok? How? You get famous in one video. Boo. And you're like TikTok famous. Yeah, boo. Don't like TikTok. Yeah, so, yeah, so teenagers, it, it's all, when social media came, it kind of just started, it, it just opened the world to us, you know, like, imagine, okay, we were born into the, the world of technology, all four of us, I know, yeah. there were, like, some people who are already in college, or how old, probably, probably people who are in their mid-20s came a little bit before like the surge of technology imagine not having google you guys just imagine oh, yeah. that will you suck know, i got all my research from google so i wouldn't even know this yeah exactly. we, and people yeah, wouldn't same. even know and imagine not having instagram you couldn't keep in touch with all your friends your family yeah yeah we're he- see so people are so heavily dependent on technology itself nowadays it's so hard not to just pick up your phone and go on instagram or it's so hard not to just look at so many other people's lives and if there wasn't social media you would never see that you would know that there are people out there who are bigger they're influencers they're They're just better than you yeah that's me Uh, but (laughs) besides the point of that uh, I think also social media has actually opened a lot of people's eyes that they're not the center of the world and they're not perfect and then they see all these other people and then they think that they're actually perfect and they are the center of the world and that just puts people down well you know what spoiler alert no one's perfect except for Jesus Jesus is perfect yeah spoiler alert (laughs) huge spoiler (laughs) alert The spoiler of the universe, the biggest spoiler. <laughs> Unless you're Jesus, you're not perfect. Unless you're Jesus, yes. Yeah. So, and I don't think exactly. I don't think Jesus is part of the class of 2021 or 2022, or 2023, or 2024, or 2025, and so on. Okay, we get it. <laughs> yes, you get the idea. Okay, so those are the some of the causes. There are obviously many more, and it's just a matter of being aware of them so you can look out for yourself and for others if you know that someone is experiencing these things just keep in mind that things can happen life isn't all blissful and full of unicorns and well it's full of puppies but you know you get the point it's not all rainbow magic fairy dust it's things can happen so yeah like getting struck by lightning 
Yeah, like look at the pandemic. We were all like, oh, two weeks off for extra school and we'll be back at it. We're still here. It's almost been a no, year, you guys. It's, yeah, I still remember. It was raining on that day. It was like everything new. Everything was crashing down that day. I remember it was raining. It yeah. Oh, yeah. There were like a bunch of like sports games for us too that we were really <laughs> excited for. And canceled. they were all canceled. And it was yeah, the day that's so like, nice. We were taking like our videos for like um, the end yeah, of the year like, too. The yearbook? Yeah. yeah, you know the sports, how they always have the sports banquet videos. Yeah. But also yeah. like um our graduation videos too. Uh, the class of twenty twenty one. They were like ha 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 yeah, graduate. We didn't even get our the freshmen didn't even get our Catalina trip. Oh yeah. my yeah. Why are we complaining about our Catalina trip now? It's been like what five months. I don't know. I didn't anyway. even sign up for that, so I wouldn't have gone anywhere. Moving Weak. on from our woes of what 2020 has done to us hopefully 2021 is better it's not looking like it but we have high hopes we can now talk about some myths and misconceptions about depression isn't that fun we we get to discover the ideas that the person in the garage came up with you know the people in the garage that's why all the people (laughs) who learn things in the garage like you know uh, some like most of the smart people like you know elon musk i think he was a garager um, some other guys were in the garage. Now they're all big companies. They rule the world. You know, so if okay. you want to get garage. No, I don't know. We're not professionals in giving jobs either. Do not listen to what this man is saying. Anyway, just the people who can't, were uneducated, who haven't learned about depression. And it's fine. I mean, I don't expect everyone to be like, oh, I want to learn about depression. Who would openly say that? Who would be like... I guess if you wanted to look out for people, but would you honestly, you guys, if Miss Rivera didn't give us this project, would you go out and study about the <laughs> No. No, no. First, <laughs> off, no. first off, it's like, when you think about it, like, when you're, um, like, when you're still, like, growing and, of course, going to school, like, you would think that it would be boring because you always have to do this research already for school. Plus, it's just depressing learning about, like, yeah. the true facts about life like it's a I toll thought. on your mind like i was like you know, oh god no yeah like you're having a great time in high school and then suddenly bam something about the pressure it's like no i don't want to grow up why I, just I, I, learning I, about it yeah just learning about it and i feel like for teenagers too it's just really awkward because obviously we just looked at the numbers it is so heavily affecting teens and we are teens so i and i feel like teens as a whole be like a barrier between adults and themselves and when the adults try to cross that barrier it just it throws you off doesn't it you guys know what i'm talking that feeling when an adult talks to you about the press and you, it's weird and just like mm-hmm. nah. yeah so like it's like you're crossing an invisible barrier that was not meant to be crossed and that's just that's a, that's just the big reason why depression is so big there is just this huge barrier that no one can see but it's there it's so it's like the biggest wall the biggest barrier i've ever seen in my entire life it is so awkward it's such an awkward topic to talk about and this is why no one is educated on it yeah and then it gets the problem and then the suicide rates go up and then everyone's like how could we let this happen it's the barrier that no one wants to cross bring down barriers bring down barriers and that's what people have been trying to do, but then it's so much harder than it sounds. And kudos to Miss Rivera for making it so much easier. She did it quite well. She passed the barrier just a little bit and came away unscathed. So bravo to Miss Rivera. Anyway, myths and misconceptions about the present. There's a lot, obviously. There's bound to be, there's always myths about things. Like there's myths about COVID. So many of them, like it was man-made and all this stuff. Myths about did the bat do it. A bat did it. Myths about what? People think what? There's a myth that Hogwarts is real. People believe that Harry Potter <laughs> is an actual place. That's a oh, myth. A wizard, there's, Harry. You're a wizard, Harry. Yeah, there's myths come with everything. Myths and misconceptions. It's something, if it's something that people will talk about or people know about, there's going to be a myth. There's probably a myth that, like, soon COVID zombies are going to appear out of nowhere. I don't know. 
Yeah. That would not be surprising if that was brought up. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you guys. No, knowing people, if... knowing people in our world, that would not be surprising at all. Well, we don't want to jinx this, yeah. you know. So like, we don't want to yeah. jinx this. Well, so you guys, okay? If there's a zombie apocalypse, apocalypse, <laughs> apocalypse. Yes, thank you, Dave. Okay, that word, and it was our fault. We spoke it into existence. You can come for us later if we're not dead by then. But anyway, moving on from zombies, back to myths and misconceptions. There are 10 we would like to discuss. We'll discuss five here. And one of them, gentlemen, we'll need your help for this one. One of them is only women get depressed. So I can sorry. immediately step in and say that is not true. Um, if that was genders... true, 50 per- you know, if that was true, the numbers, 50% of them would be like, It'll be lower, you know, because it'd be gone. Like, snap of the finger. Yeah, Honestly, Thanos style. Because yeah. if you're born, yeah. if you're born a guy. Superior gender, right there. And I'm not saying anything right now. But if that was true, if it was true, I'm not, if it was true, superior gender. But it's not. Yeah. So. It's not. So yeah. No superior gender. Both genders are equal. And I think the reason why this is a myth is because in this world today, and. Throughout the world, it's been a problem for many, many years, many. It's been the belief that men and male gender as a whole is not allowed to be show weakness. You know, like you guys, you gentlemen, you can speak from experience. Weak is for weak people. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it definitely came from the age of like being sexist or anything like that about men being like better than women but yeah. at least yeah. most people inside this world at least most people at least know yeah. that it's not true yeah <laughs> yeah so it's such a big thing for guys not to be allowed to and depression is viewed as a weakness nowadays yeah it, as we said before it is shown as a mental illness and a disability a disability yeah, so that can be caused yeah so that's just a huge part and i think that's one of the problems why most people don't speak up it's like for guys it's such a bigger like it's so much harder isn't it to come and say oh i'm depressed because you're a guy oh, yeah. yeah it would be you know what james are you depressed james told, um <laughs> i may have gone through it but Definitely, if you just walk up to another guy that, like, most of the time they'd be like, oh, you should just toughen up, just go through it, you'll be fine, or yeah. anything like that, and that could work maybe at times, but honestly, most of the time it would probably have a negative effect on you, because then you would feel like you shouldn't tell others about it, or ask for help, or anything like that, or have any support. So that can definitely hurt you negatively as a guy. I don't know about yeah. you girls, though. The female gender. A, that's another barrier. The female gender and the male gender. It's been like that for years. It's not even a barrier at this point. It's just the way of human life. Okay. So, yeah. The misconception that only women get depressed is not true. No. Ruled out the next by one? more uneducated high schoolers. Not true. Also by fact, by fact. The next misconception is that medication is the only way to manage depression. Oh so, God, no! Yeah. I'm pretty sure you can just take therapy. Yeah, so therapy is also another option. I mean, it's not just medication. There is therapy. That is why the job therapist exists. Isn't there are some medications that can actually cause the, like, make your depression work when it's trying to help it. Yeah. Yeah, like substance abuse. Substance abuse is a cause of depression and medication, I guess. You abuse it and there goes your spike in everything wrong in life. Yeah, yeah so Wait. therapy is also another option, but it really just comes down to what your doctor prescribes to you. I don't think you should... I mean, if you know what you need, yes, but I would suggest that you go by what your doctor tells you. Like if your doctor also, prescribes you a, a therapist, you know, he can prescribe you anything that can help your depression. It just doesn't have to be medication. Yeah. 
I mean, you can also do the therapy and medication. I feel like that is also an alternative that would might work better. It just it depends on the person. It is yeah. different for everyone. Like you're not gonna get treated the same way. Like if I if in the uh, that event that me and James fell into a depression, James might need to do therapy, and then I might need to take a medication. It's not going to be the same. It's it, it's not the same for one person and another. There's always gonna be something different. So no, depression cannot be managed only by medications. It can be managed in a variety of different ways, and yeah, just the word of your doctor is probably the way you should go by, but it's all entirely up to you. It is, medication is not the only way. So, second misconception, no, not correct, false, false information. Shouldn't they uh, all be false if they're misconceptions? It makes a better effect if we rule it out as false. We sound professional. We are not professional, but it makes us sound professional. <laughs> sure. So, third Almost misconception. So we're going to make it a misconception. Third, almost misconception. If you have a family member with depression, you will have it too. I know we talked about this earlier about how genetics can lead to it, but we're talking like sibling wise, you know? Yeah, like like you can't just, you okay, it's a sad event that your sibling goes through depression. You're not going to go through a depression too. It's your feelings that affect what you feel and it's not the genetics make it a higher rate but just because a family member goes through depression does not mean they will pass it to you like misconception it is now a misconception by us false false information moving on to the next misconception that is already mis- on a misconception but we will be proving again that is a misconception number four depression is only brought on by a traumatic event you know, is- we talked about this earlier as well, with that big tower of paper and your parents looking at you to get them good grades. That's not a traumatic event. That's, I don't know, that's homework and parents' expectation. That's, and that- That's stress that and anxiety. Too. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so not just a traumatic event. Definitely not just a traumatic event. There's so many things that can bring it on. Like, I don't know. Uh, like, maybe just moving to a new house. Like, if you lived in a house. That's kind of, like, a a big event. But, like, I don't know. Yeah, we're not professionals here, you know? Yeah. So We're not good at making scenarios. James, do you have a scenario? Laureen, do you have a scenario? Anyone? Getting a new job, moving to a different country. I don't know. A, a, a A new school. Yeah, I, yeah, moving to a new school can also bring out the pressure. James, do you have any scenarios to remind me? Um, I guess marriage, divorce, or having a kid. No, James, we're supposed to be not traumatic events. But those so. aren't traumatic events, Alex. Why do you think marriage is a traumatic Alex. event? Why would could, marriage I mean, be a traumatic event? Oh my goodness. You could be in an abusive relationship. <laughs> we're yeah, making the marriage sound bad. <laughs> Okay, no, we're not making marriage bad. We're not letting <laughs> this podcast make marriage in a bad light. This is and not this proves marriage that is a we bad have no is a that we that none of us are in marriages. This literally proves yes, it we because we know nothing. Marriages. Yep. <laughs> we do not know what we're talking about. I'm sure marriage is a happy and blissful thing. It is not wrong. It is not bad. Do not listen to what Alex says. I'm, I'm yeah, sure. Alex. Marriage you know, is wonderful. most of the information here I gave was super good. Anyways, what's the oh, next? What? Uh, what's the yes, next? Moving one? on. Marriage is confirmed to be a beautiful and lovely thing. If you look forward to it, please continue to look forward to it. Okay, misconception ruled as a misconception. Goodbye. It is now passed. The law, not the law, just a misconception. Okay, moving on. Next misconception that we will prove that is a misconception, even though it is a misconception. Number five, depression is a weakness. I mean, like, it's just not. Think about it. A weakness I mean, is like... James, describe a weakness. A weakness would be, I guess... Technically, it would be you're hurt and you're inside of a fight. That's a weakness. Or, yeah, depression is a mental state, but it won't be a weakness. 
Like, someone can't just use it against you. I mean, people can. I think that's the fear that people will be like, oh, you're depressed. No, you're not. Or, like, they'll put you down for being depressed. Like, because there's so much going on, like, in the world nowadays. Like, there's so much weight on a lot of people's shoulders. So, like, say, like, some one person, two people had the same job. They worked at, I don't know. Starbucks somewhere they worked in the same job and one of them got depressed but both of them had the same workload and then that other person didn't get depressed so then that same person would be like you're just faking it or whatever because they had the same workload but only one of them got depressed and then that's a whole thing I think that's where it comes from that depression is a weakness like only the people who can't handle as many things as other people can have depression and that's why it is a weakness well, everyone is different, so, like, you can't just, like, get, just say you're faking it, because, like, everyone's mental health, mental state, brains are different, so. I agree, because they do not decide to become depressed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, depression is not a choice, and it's definitely not a weakness, and that's just the big problem in society. It has been deemed a weakness, but in so many ways. And then that just stops people from coming out and then it goes on and on and on and on and on and on until like it's like until they just feel embarrassed about it yeah and then there comes the dire consequences and then sometimes those consequences can't be reversed so you can't do anything and then you know it's like a regret that you'll have for the rest of your life well Anyways, I think we hit all our points. You talked about anything. I think it's about time we wrap things up. So I just like to say thank you for listening to us and good night. Good night. Thank good you. afternoon. Good morning. Good wherever you are. <laughs> and yeah, this time wherever, wherever you are. are. It depends on whatever you're watching. Cause but yeah, whenever you're watching, yeah. have a good afternoon. Good morning. Good night. Well, goodbye. Everybody. And right, we goodbye. need to end this, guys. We need to end this. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye.